So for the past two years that COVID has been around, none of my family members contracted COVID-19 until recently, January 2022. So I, I believe it's the current COVID called Omicron that is really spreading fast, probably faster than the first COVID that was discovered in 2019. Hello once again everyone. Welcome back to Breakage Barriers. My name is Blessing aka Lady B. Prior to my contracting COVID-19, I had been doing a lot of research and investigation about the virus. Part of what I had been doing was to listen to qualified doctors on YouTube who have full knowledge and current knowledge of what is going on with this virus, how the virus acts. There's this doctor that I actually listened to and I did exactly what he advised to increase the intake of vitamins, especially vitamin D and zinc prior to my contracting COVID-19. So I was already taking it. I just didn't start taking it when I discovered that I had contracted COVID-19. I had been taking it well over a year. This is the one that I've been taking and it comes in 2000 units, uh, which is also the same thing as 50 UG. So what I've been administering is four a day. And when I contracted COVID-19, I increased the intake. I believe strongly that it played a great role in the journey to my healing mind you this is not the only vitamin i take this is just one of the needed vitamins the doctor i listened to recommended i'm going to play the video for you later after my explanation okay i was taking like two two between two to four liters of water a day i believe strongly that that also helped with the dehydration because I was extremely dehydrated. Uh, another thing that I did was I also made a combination of blending lemon and ginger together, placed them in a blender and blend, blended it together. And I also added uh, a bit of honey, which helped with the taste. So that was my tea, my homemade tea. That was heavenly. I hope this might help somebody out there. But meanwhile, I'm going to play the doctor that I listened to. Um, that information was greatly helpful and I'm glad that I listened. So please do listen and uh, hopefully it might save somebody out there. Thank you very much for watching. Do take care of yourself and keep safe. All right. Um, but I have well over 1,500, close to 2,000 patients easily who come to my clinic, if not a lot more than that. Um, and as many of them as possible, I told to take vitamin D and I keep telling them, I keep reinforcing it. And I tell them what dose to take. I tell them to take vitamin K2 and I also tell them to take zinc. And then I tell them to up the dose of zinc if they, um, if they actually develop any viral symptoms and I tell them what to do. Um, and what I can say is I've had quite a few patients with COVID, um, as would be expected. Mm. Uh, um, and I've probably had a handful who ended up getting to the emergency department and then being sent home with some kind of a treatment plan. Um, I've not had a single patient admitted into hospital, let alone be on an intensive care unit. Um, now, I don't know what that means. Um, but there were studies that um, came out soon afterwards, around a year ago, there was a study in Israel in one of the hospitals which showed that people who were getting very sick were deficient in vitamin D. 
um, and people who had high levels of vitamin D were not getting very sick. Um, and if you read a lot of the research, even though it's said that these um, that there's no um, treatment for COVID other than monoclonal antibodies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, it seems to me like we are missing on a very important point here. And I think the whole the whole point of COVID was, um, from a medical standpoint, was we were told that this is. That, that all of our efforts are supposed to be there to prevent the hospitals being swamped, to prevent the ICU beds being blocked. We don't have enough ventilators. We don't have enough staff. Um, we want to protect the NHS. We want to protect every health system that we can. And yet what was actually happening was people were being sent home and just told, if your lips go blue, call us again. Or if, you know, that, that's, that's, that, that was it. There was no yeah, actual... Yeah. There was no yep. plan even for treating, let alone, you know, a milder case. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to talk about that, basically, because in my humble opinion, this pandemic doesn't need to be um, anything like what it's like what it is. Mm. I don't think your opinion is that humble, actually, uh, Doctor, because you, you're trained as a general practitioner in the UK and in Israel. You've got a lot of surgical training and a lot of accident and emergency training as well. So you've got a pretty uh, pr pretty good body of, of medical knowledge. And you're also inter very interested in preventative health care, I think, aren't you? That how, be, yeah. how disease can be prevented. So um, the, the dose of vitamin D, what, what sort of doses are, are you thinking about? And do you like to titrate it up to a particular level or, or how do you approach that? Um, I, I, first of all, it should be noted that a lot of people are initially resistant when I mention this to them. I tell them, look, this is not a, strictly only a vitamin. It's actually a hormone. Um, it's a steroid hormone. Uh, it has a lot of effects on the body at different doses. Um, there are estimations where by at doses of around five to 10,000 units a day, it's interacting with switching on and switching off um, up to 1,200 genes in the body and at lower doses, lower numbers. Um, it's known to be extremely safe, even at very, what, what are called high doses. There have been studies that have shown that taking 50,000 units a day for six months has had no adverse effects. Um, I usually tell people to take 4,000 units if they're normal adult, but I also test many people's vitamin D levels. And even in Israel where it's sunny um, and people have quite a bit of exposure to the sun, I find quite a lot of people who've got low levels of vitamin D, so below 20, some people even below 10. Um, the ideal dose to get them to would be between 50 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. Um, so this is nanograms that, per millimeter. Per milliliter, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. in terms of nanograms per mil, that would be like a, it'd be like two point five times that, wouldn't it? It'd be a lot higher. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It's the I way it works, works out. Yeah. Way. So, so fifty to hundred nanograms per mil. That's right. right. That that is a very interesting piece of information. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I, I can say that um, I, I don't know if I'm reiterating here, but I've literally no not problem. had one person admitted into the hospital yet. <clears throat> Um, they've all ended up coming back home from the emergency department. Um, now, my population does consist of both young and old. It's more skewed towards young and middle age, for sure. Um, but again, you know, the fact that people were not even being admitted into hospital in, a, in my population, it says something. It's, it does, it's not the whole picture by any means, and I'm not trying to tell anybody that this is the, the, the cure-all for, for COVID. But if everybody was doing this, would we have anything like the current so-called justification for for turning this into a global crisis? Yes. Yes. I mean, in a population of 2,000 people, uh, given the, the very high prevalence there has been of COVID in Israel, I mean, I would suspect probably at least three quarters of your patients have been exposed to the virus probably probably even more than that but probably 90 percent actually have been exposed and you would have expected one two or three percent of those potentially to be hospitalized so the fact that none have 
uh, as you say we can't we can't extrapolate that from that to the whole world but that is actually if we actually did a statistically uh if we did like a t-test on that and compared yeah. your population to the the, the the population say in jerusalem or, or damascus or somewhere that weren't that weren't getting the vitamin d i'm sure we would find a statistically significant difference between those yeah i mean i i honestly don't know i don't want to make any um, mm. specific claims what i can say is that the, the concoction of things that I've told people to take are extremely safe. I mean, far safer than 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 most other medications that I can think of. And I'm not at all saying that they shouldn't get vaccinated. I'm not saying they shouldn't get other treatments if needed. But as a first line of defense, we should be dealing with people's immune systems mm -hmm. in the safest way possible. Now, we know that 25 milligrams a day of, bit of zinc is extremely safe. You can take up to 40 milligrams a day without any ill effects for most adults. Um, going above that, it can reduce the absorption of copper, so it's not a good idea to take that on a long-term basis. Um, vitamin D, you asked me what dose, so most people, I tell them 4,000 units, but people who are overweight Mm -hmm. They may need up to 8,000 or even 10,000 units or more per day. Um, and the other thing I tell them to take is vitamin K2, um, oh, yeah. 200 micrograms a day uh, every day as well because vitamin D does um, uh, cause the release of calcium from the bones into the blood and you, you, you want to try and avoid any deposition of that in the wrong places. Um, and that's it basically. Um, and obviously the other things like um, getting enough sleep, um, mm. getting outside, doing sports. Mm. Um, it's very much about looking after yourself. Mm. Um, but my, my, my concern is that all the focus has gone into um, putting the burden on the hospitals mm. um, and even, even uh, outpatient care. And we need to be doing everything that we can to prevent this becoming a severe illness. And a lot of the focus has gone on to like high tech, very clever preventative treatments like, like these vaccines. And, and, which expensive. Are, and expensive. But I mean, these vaccines are completely brilliant. I mean, we've invented mRNA vaccines and adenovirus vector vaccines. It, it really is clever stuff. It's, but, it's remarkable. You know, but, 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 you know, what, 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 why have expensive, clever things if we could use the, the, the simple things as well as? Yeah, but I mean, I, I would still say we've got over half of the world that's not been vaccinated yet. Yes. But what are we doing for them? Mm. Why wait? <clears throat> in, indeed, yeah. So what's really struck me there is I've only been to Israel for a short period of time, but I remember it was pretty hot and sunny. So if people are short of vitamin D in Israel, what must it be like in the north of England, in Chicago, in Canada? Um, right. Our levels must be right down in our boots. But the, the other thing to say is that the definition of what is a normal vitamin D yeah. is questionable in this situation because one would normally say that someone's supposed to have above 32 nanograms per milliliter. But it seems from the studies that I've read that to have the best protection possible for COVID uh, and probably for other, other viral infections, including the flu, um, you would want to have a, a level above 50. Now, even if they get to 30 or 32, it's got to do something, perhaps not as much. Um, but um, I, I really, it's, it's a cheap vitamin. There's no, there's no, there's pretty much no side effects of this and it can do a lot. Um, it is interesting, isn't it? The way that you, you, we need a relatively low dose to prevent the, the classic vitamin D deficiency disease of the 19th yep. century rickets. Uh, yep. And then you need, but then slightly higher dose does a bit more and a slightly higher dose does a bit more and a slightly higher dose does everything that triggers all the genes yep. and, and, and the protein pathways that actually need vitamin D as part of its sort of e e enzymic activities. It's an incredibly, it's amazing how much vitamin D is, is just vitamin D receptors are just rooted in so many human physiological they're, they're systems. Virtually every cell from what I know. Mm. They're on virtually every cell. Um, so it, it does suggest that they have a purpose and a lot of it is immunomodulatory. So they're actually directing the immune system to work in a better way. Uh, if you combine that with zinc as well, which we also know has um, quite significant effects on viral infections mm. uh, and the ability for, for cells to kill viral infections. Mm -hmm. I think, 
you know, that there's really little to say, don't take this concoction.